So, uh, but, uh, but then tonight I wanted to speak on uh, the fossil record and the studies of fossils, which uh, the technical term for this particular science is paleontology, where paleo simply means old, and ontology was, means actually the nature of the old. So, anyway, that's, that's what this particular science is called, Start, you know, st studying, studying life as it was in the past, in the very, very distant past. Mm -hmm. And uh, study of life in, on this planet in the past is uh, done by studying fossils, whatever fossils have been left in the crust of the earth um, and because life forms the, or living organisms I mean most cases they don't leave fossils uh, we should not expect that our bodies will be found as fossils uh, 10 million years from now probably they will turn into ashes or earth or worms and most organisms are simply, you know, eating, being, being eaten, and decomposed, or whatever. But a very tiny, tiny fraction of, of organisms are which actually they some or another become fossilized through some, through some circumstance. Like suddenly, there's a like some organism might be buried suddenly. Then it's, it's into some kind of a sudden burial, um, or not, not only the organism itself, but some trace of the organism, just like footprints or other prints of the of the organism. Sometimes even just uh, tracks uh, from animals, like worms tracks from worms. I mean, that it's, so it's a tiny fraction of. Organisms, they, they are, they, they become fossils. But even though it's only a tiny fraction, to see the enormous long time that life has been on this planet, uh, there are uh, billions and billions of fossils in the crust of the earth, and you can find them in, you know, all over the world. And this is what scientists they are studying, and, that, and thus they are trying to get an idea about what. Uh, what, how life was in the past. So, um, yeah, I'm going to jump right into it. Of course, we'll be talking about the theory of evolution and uh, the problems with the theory of evolution. Now, some will claim that all the fossils, they clearly demonstrate evolution as Darwin envisioned it. This you can find. Uh, for example, here. Right now, this is in Danish. I could, 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 no, actually, I don't have this particular presentation in English. But this, uh, this is a quote from a publication from National Academy of Sciences in North America, where which was called Science Evolution and Creationism. The name is just uh, a scientific organization giving a lot of you know, pro evolution arguments and they claim that the uh, fossil records uh, is an extent, uh, contains an extensive proof that evolution did take place and that's the impression that many had that it, you know, the fossils are very very clear they document clearly that uh, evolution has taken place that like, you know, we started like three and a half billion years ago with simple life forms and as you follow the fossil record you can see gradually how life has, has evolved and how things have changed gradually, gradually starting from just a few varieties and that's gradually you know, diversify and become more and more and more and more different uh, varieties of life forms and 
species and so on. Like a tree that starts out with a single branch or trunk and then this tree branches and more branches and this it has this tree form it just becomes more and more variable as you as time progresses. And it's and the whole thing is very gradual, very smooth and so on. And that's all very nicely documented by the fossil records. That's the impression that most have. And you hear that claim in publications such as this. Um, however, there are actually some problems with that claim. And uh, I'll, before getting, I, mean, I have this, uh, piece, this video here, which I will, let's have a look at that, and then afterwards I'll discuss more on, on, on the problems that we found. Uh, let's see. was refuted not only by molecular biology, but also by paleontology, that is, fossil science. No fossil remains supporting evolution have ever been unearthed in excavations conducted in every corner of the world. Fossils are the remains of living beings that have lived in the past. The skeletal structures of living beings whose bodies are rapidly insulated from air and survive intact. These remains give us information about the history of life on Earth. Thus, it is the fossil record that provides scientific answers to the question of the origin of living beings. The theory of evolution claims that all living things descend from a common ancestor. According to the theory, the origination of such diverse living beings took place through minor and successive variations over a very long period of time. The theory argues that first, the unicellular living beings were formed, which then in hundreds of millions of years turned into marine invertebrates and fish respectively. These fish later had supposedly emerged onto land and turned into reptiles. The story goes further and says that birds and mammals evolved from reptiles. For this claim to be true, there ought to have been numerous intermediary species linking one living species to another. For instance, if reptiles truly had evolved into birds, then countless half-bird, half-reptile creatures ought to have lived at one time or another. And these intermediary creatures ought to have incomplete, half-developed organs. Darwin called these hypothetical creatures transitional forms. He knew that in order to support his theory, the remains of such intermediate forms had to be found in the fossil record. And the origin of species he wrote, if my theory be true, numberless intermediate varieties linking most closely all the species of the same group together must assuredly have existed. Consequently, evidence of their former existence could be found only amongst fossil remains. However, Darwin was aware that the fossil record did not contain any of these hypothetical intermediate forms. This is why he devoted a special chapter to this in his book and pose these troubled questions. Why, if species have descended from other species by fine gradations, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? But as by this theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed, why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the earth? Darwin had supposed that such transitional forms would be discovered when the fossil record was inspected more carefully. Subsequently, evolutionists 
that followed him examined geological layers all around the world for 140 years and looked for these missing fossils. All these efforts ended with great despair. The transitional forms imagined by Darwin remained just that, figments of imagination. English paleontologist Derek Ager admits this fact, though he is an evolutionist. The point emerges that if we examine the fossil record in detail, whether at the level of orders or of species, we find over and over again, not gradual evolution, but the sudden explosion of one group at the expense of another. The oldest stratum of the earth in which fossils of living creatures have been found is that of the Cambrian, which has an estimated age of 500 to 530 million years. In strata older than the Cambrian, no fossils of any creatures except a few unicellular organisms are to be seen. In the Cambrian period, however, many diverse species appear quite abruptly. More than 30 invertebrate species, such as jellyfish, starfish, trilobites, and snails emerge all of a sudden. These living beings have complex body systems, such as the circulatory system, and also very complex organs. For instance, the eye of the trilobite is made of hundreds of honeycomb-like cells, each having a double lens system. It is a wonder of design. This is the first eye that appeared on the Earth, and it definitely refutes the Darwinist claim that life evolved from the very primitive towards the complex. Moreover, the honeycomb eye structure of trilobite has survived since 530 million years without a single change. Modern insects such as bees and dragonflies have the same eye structure as did the trilobite. According to the theory of evolution, species must have evolved from pre-existing forms. However, there is no other complex life form known to have existed before the trilobites and other species of the Cambrian period. The Cambrian species came into existence all of a sudden, without any ancestors. A well-known advocate of the theory of evolution, the English zoologist Richard Dawkins, makes the following confession on the subject. It is as though the species of the Cambrian were just planted there without any evolutionary history. This situation refutes the theory of evolution for sure, because Darwin wrote in The Origin of Species, if numerous species belonging to the same genera or families have really started into life all at once, the fact would be fatal to the theory of descent with slow modification through natural selection. This fatal stroke that frightened Darwin comes from the Cambrian period, right at the outset of the fossil record. In all fossil layers after the Cambrian, living species always appear abruptly and fully formed. The main taxa, such as fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, and the hundreds of thousands of different species within them all appeared suddenly in distinct structures. There is not even a single transitional form between any groups as evolutionists imagine. This fact is the clear evidence that all basic kinds were created separately by God.
evolutionist, paleontologist, Mark Zanecki, confesses this fact as follows. A major problem in proving the theory has been the fossil record. This record has never revealed traces of Darwin's hypothetical intermediate variants. Instead, species appear and disappear abruptly. And this anomaly has fueled the creationist argument that each species was created by God. Moreover, there is no difference between fossils hundreds of millions of years old and their modern descendants. For instance, a 400 million year old shark and a modern shark have exactly the same structure. Similarly, there is no difference between a 100 million year old ant and a modern ant, a 135 million year old dragonfly and a modern dragonfly, a 100 million year old turtle and a modern turtle or a 55 million year old bat and a modern bat. That is, all living kinds were created by God and did not undergo any evolution after their creation. Okay, I think we can stop here with this one. Um, yes, yes,
here. Uh, yeah. So again, this was just playing for this computation from NAS that uh, the fossil discoveries give a very strong proof that evolution has happened. And uh, but as uh, this turns out actually to be highly uh, problematic. One problem is that uh, here this is a quote from Origin of Species by Darwin, where he also is wondering why the number of intermediate forms, which must have been very enormous, why they're not found in the geological layers. Mm -hmm. And the intermediate forms uh, transitional, middle-legend, all kinds of form. Oh, okay. um, why they're not found in the crust of the earth in the geological layers. And he, he says that the geology certainly doesn't mean such a gradual line of intermediate fossils, intermediate species. And he says, and this, that this might be the greatest objection against my theory. So actually, Darwin didn't claim that the fossil record was a great, was a great argument in favor of his theory. He considered it, it, it might be the greatest objection against my theory, the fossil record. So one can also say this, this might be Darwin's time. So but still 150 years have gone since Darwin published the Origin of Species. What, has happened then, maybe, maybe things have changed then, because uh, the uh, fossil layers were quite unexcavated outside Europe and North America, hardly anything had been excavated. And, uh, but since then, paleontologists have been studying rocks all over the world in great, great numbers. And uh, so, what has happened since then? Uh, actually, not, not, nothing has really changed. It's a fact. If you take the statements against of the evolutionists themselves, then uh, you actually find no. There's a, it, it didn't, it, 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 like this, this is from 1954. One professor from Lund in Sweden. He says that the fossil material is now so complete that the lack of transitional forms cannot be explained away as lack of material. The, uh, lacks are real, they will never be found. It's simply a, a characteristic of the fossil records. They don't have these intermediate forms, is what this professor is saying. And even if you get uh, closer to now, in 2008, one of the world's leading paleontologists and also the evolutionist, Niles uh, Elbridge, he, uh, he, he makes, states here that the patterns in the evolutionary history typically repeat themselves, no matter where one finds them, without leaving traces of intermediate forms. So that's in 2008. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a consistent characteristic of the fossil record. Actually, let me just... Uh, I have my computer back over there, my computer back. Yeah, yeah. I want to share with you a few more quotes like that. Because my thing is just, you know, because I can always find you know, one, you know, so, so known scientists here, then they can explain to actually that they're really, uh, you know, go into. Here, what the paleontologists are saying is actually it's, it, this, this is just a very uniform conclusion. So, I have some more. Um, this is from 1979. One paleontologist, Dave Rauch, he uh, stated here We are now about 120 years after Darwin, and knowledge of the fossil record has been greatly expanded. Ironically, we have even fewer examples of evolution and transition than we had in Darwin's time. The fewer meaning at Darwin's time, they had some. They, they thought they were that looks like transitional, but actually, as they really explained closer, found no accident. That they also not that this is not transitional forms. And 
here, nice Elrich, same as Elrich here, he wrote in 1995. No wonder paleontologists shied away from evolution for so long. It never seemed to happen. Assidious collecting up cliff faces yields zigzags, minor oscillations, and the very occasional slight accumulation of chains over millions of years at a rate too slow to account for all the prodigious change that has occurred in evolutionary history. When we do see the introduction of, evol of evolutionary novelty, it usually shows up with a bang and often with no firm evidence that the fossils did not evolve elsewhere. Evolution cannot forever be going on somewhere else. Yet that's how the fossil record has struck many a forlorn paleontologist looking to learn something about evolution. Did it catch what is it? It was kind of complicated, but I think the conclusion I got. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's talking about how paleontologists they assume evolution has happened. So then they go out and they study, you know, the, you know, the fossil records like that. Expecting to look for, find an evolution, but they don't see it. They cannot find it, so they get very frustrated. <laughs> and uh, it's actually, it's, it, it, they cannot observe it in the fossil record. There are hardly any change, if there's any change, it's over millions of years at a very, very slow rate. Generally, and generally, it's only you know, variation in size, you know, species typically become a little bigger and a little, small, a little smaller over time. You know, it's, this is not real variation. And, uh, and then when there's something new, it's just there, bang, no evidence that it has, you know, there was any transitional forms. So he, he wrote like that in 1995. Um, and here is, is another paleontologist, Stephen Gay Gould, who wrote, the history of most fossil species includes two features particularly inconsistent with gradualism. Gradualism is, again, that's gradual evolution, the idea that evolution happened very gradually. One, stasis. Most species exhibit no direct change during their tenure on Earth. They appear in the fossil record looking pretty much the same as when they disappear. Morphological change is usually limited and directionless. Stasis means it's just an unchanging, steady. That's, that's, that's the main characteristic of the fossil record. And then, Sudden appearance in any local area a species does not arise gradually by the steady transformation of its ancestors, it appears all at once and fully formed. This is, a, this is, a, this is actually characteristic of a fossil record. And it's not, I mean, it's, there are scientists who will debate that, but uh, if you take the top ones, and like it's, it's best between Stephen Gould and Heinz Elvis, they are the most famous paleontologist of the last 50 years, I'd say. They, I mean, they, they're the real top paleontologists, they know what they're talking about. So, and, they, and their claim is there's no, things just, you know, it's very, there's no change, and when there's something new appears, it appears bang, just like that. And, and they have been, they're one of those who have tried to find it. Yeah, yeah, to find yeah, it, yeah, 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 yes, that's the whole life, they're just, you know, studying fossils, digging up fossils, and that's all they're doing. Yeah. And, uh, and so much so that actually Gould and Ulrich, yeah. they introduced a new evolutionary theory in the 1980s, 1970s and 1980s, which became very famous, it was called punctuated equilibrium. Uh, and it actually means that equilibrium is another word of stasis or you know, the things are unchanging. And punctuated means it's broken. So it's, a, so, so it's a theory that basically things are just stable and it's sometimes suddenly broken. Uh, and not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's, it's just the opposite theory of gradualism, things just change in gradually. And then they had the idea or uh, proposed that when evolution actually happens, it happens at a very isolated area. In, in, in a number of individuals of a species are suddenly isolated due to some you know, suddenly some flood or earthquake like that, and isolated on a very limited area. 